Morning, this is Zach with Tevis Architects. I'm out here on the site of our uh, Trace Forest build. It's been a couple weeks since we did an update, so I thought I'd walk you through it real quick. As you can see, we've got most of our uh, forms pulled at this point, so all of our footing foundation work is done. Um, we are getting ready to start insulating our footings, insulating our foundations. Um, as you can see, we've got a few pieces up here um, along the back wall of the garage. So this is uh, something new. Um, it's becoming required in some parts of the country. Um, for us here, we're, we're doing it just because it makes for a more efficient home. Um, but we're, we're coating everything with a uh, R10, uh, R10 2 insulation. So that's a uh, rigid extruded polystyrene sheet um, that goes over the uh, waterproofing, the, the membrane that's on the walls. Um, and when we pour our garage slab in here, it will be completely hidden, covered up. Um, we will also do the same treatment on all the exterior walls of the house. So the portions where this will be exposed, we'll go ahead and uh, stucco or eaves over the top of. Um, so the entirety of our foundation will be insulated uh, on the outside. And that does a couple things. One, um, it helps keep the basement just a more temperate space. But two, um, you'll notice we're doing it on the outside of our concrete wall. Most people will insulate the inside of a basement, but putting that on the outside creates our thermal break on the outside portion of the concrete. And that means that when the ground hits, you know, 50 degrees constant temperature um, that that concrete wall actually can be warmer than that uh, so we don't have the, the thermal bridging of the concrete directly into the soil you also notice that uh, our plumbers have been here um, have been busy they've started roughing in all of our plumbing um, both for our mechanical room our uh, bathroom in the basement and then all of our drains uh, to go to our upper floor levels. Um, you'll see that that's one of the reasons for the over excavation of, of the hole of the dig um, is so that they can get the proper uh, fall on all these. You'll see uh, each of those pipes has at least a quarter inch per foot drop on it down um, and everything is going out uh, at our one main point. We'll walk over there so we can see that a little bit better. Here you can get a little better angle of our plumbing um, how everything's coming out now that'll actually go out underneath our footing um, as you can see on the whole side here we haven't yet tied that down into our sanitary sewer um, but that gives you a little better idea of all the all the rough in on the plumbing that goes in um, now you'll see we've got some rebar stacked up there um, we've got a big pile of gravel up on top um, they'll start laying down all the gravel and, and leveling uh, this for the basement slab probably in this next week. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll do the number four rebar a two foot on center through this whole slab. Uh, the basement slab itself will also be insulated. So after the gravel goes down, everything gets flattened and leveled. Um, there'll be sheets of foam that'll go down and then we'll set the steel up on chairs on top. Um, so again, it's an extra step to make sure uh, that this basement space functions as efficiently as possible. Um, it's not usual uh, for construction practices today, but it's one of the things that will help us achieve our net zero rating on this home. I also wanted to talk about um, the windows a little bit. As you can see, um, it's a cost issue, but to to frame in the portion above the headers. Uh, a lot of times it's just easier to, to pour that all with one opening. Um, so all of our basement windows, and you see the, the big window that we added here above the bar in the basement, um, those have all been roughed in. Um, we've got all of our uh, flashing, all of our um, water protection in place, so we'll get our foam up right on top of that.